Welcome back, Holotable Heroes, to another Galaxy of Heroes video. I am your boy Scribble, and I'm going to help you understand what on earth mods are. Let's do this. Let's start off with the very basics then. What are mods? Mods are, in essence, they are a way of manipulating and enhancing specific stats within a character. OK, this is the mod view of your standard inventory page. So if I click this button, here is my standard character inventory page where you can see the entire roster of characters that you currently own. Click the little mods button and I'll say, hey, these are the mods equipped. Now, the first thing that you might notice is that certain mods have got a gold background and certain mods have got a silver background or a gray background. You'll also notice that there are different shapes and different colors within the ind individual centers of these mods. So you've got little times two and an explosion here, you've got a standard explosion here, you've got an exclamation mark there, and I know what you're thinking, you're thinking Scribble, why has your Boba Fett sign of Django got three different mod sets on, and we'll get to that. But, in essence, the very core of it, mods just help you improve stats. Now why would you want to do that? Well, because that massively helps you improve your performance in every single game mode that you take said characters into. Certain events, such as the Reaver mission, for example, benefit from having specific mod setups. Certain um, GAC matchups certainly benefit from having certain characters modded in a particular way. So in order for you to really be able to take advantage of that and take your game to the next level, you need to understand when to use which mods, which mods to slice and enhance further, and how best to equip them to particular characters. Mod sets then, that's where we're going to start off first. If you notice over here, you'll see the different shapes. These are different mod sets. This little plus sign is a health set. You can see I've got two over here and we've got four with a little explosion. These are offense sets. So to check out the different sets that you can have and what they actually do, click down here, you'll see different set bonuses. All right. So here are all the different types of mod sets. You've got health, defense, crit damage, crit chance, tenacity, offense, potency, and speed. What you'll also notice is there is a little required number over here on the left hand side. What that means is in order for you to achieve the benefit, this set bonus, okay, you've got a basic set bonus and a level 15 for when it's maxed out, you need to have a certain number of those mod sets. It's either two or four. So when we look at Ray over here, you can see we've got two healths. That means that currently active, we have got one health set bonus and we've got four over here of the offense sets. Now, offense sets are a four set bonus, okay? So I, if you click on the button here, you'll see we need to have at least four mods that are all of the same set, in this case, offense, to achieve the set bonus. So as we said, this middle row here, this middle column, sorry, is the basic bonus you'll get if you just equip any four mods of that particular offense set, you'll get 7.5% offense. But if all of those mods are also level 15, you get the maxed out benefit, which you should always be aiming to try and do. In this case, 15%, it's doubling up that benefit. And I think it's a double up for every single stat. Yeah, twice the benefit for just having every single mod at the maximum level. You might be asking yourself then, when do I use particular types of sets? And that's not a very straightforward question to answer because it really does depend on the character and the kit and sometimes even the counters. So we'll just use Galactic Legend Ray here as an example. Now, I've done loads of roster reviews on my channel going over how to mod individual characters or specific setups, and Ray in particular is a bit of a nuanced character. Typically speaking, for Rey, you want to have lots of offense, lots of health, and a bit of speed, right? So when we're looking at her stats, just checking over here, my Rey currently at Relic 8 has got 222,000 health, just over 500 speed, and she's got 11,835 physical offense. Now, you could achieve these stats by using health sets, all health sets, offense sets, you could even do crit damage sets, not that I advise it because crit damage is a complete waste, or you could might have a speed set and a health set. Really, it's less about the set in a lot of instances and more about the end result. Now, how developed and how mature your mod roster is will dictate how well you can manipulate those stats to hit those goals. So I want you to try and avoid looking at, oh, I must have this particular set or I'm too concerned about not breaking up or not having enough of the same type of set to get a full set bonus, when really the ultimate goal is to make sure that the end result is as good as it can be. And sometimes that means using a speed set, sometimes it's a health set or an offense set. So play around with your mods to figure out what actually has the best result. 
In an ideal world, of course, that would mean having full sets, having a speed set with a health set or an offense set and a crit chance set or a crit damage set. But don't get too focused on that point. So you'll notice that there are different shapes to mods, okay? Different shapes to mods can go in different slots. So for example, you have what's called a receiver, but everybody in the Galaxy of Heroes community will call this an arrow. You've got a triangle across a circle, a diamond and a square. Okay, only those shapes of mods can fit into these slots. You can't put a square over here and we'll have them all be squares or anything like that. There are prescribed slots for each type of mod. You'll also notice that these mods have got what's known as primary stats and secondary stats. Okay, primary stats is the one at the top over here. Right now on this arrow, for example, we have got a health percentage. We also have four secondary stats. So that's all of the stats underneath it. And I want you to understand this, that if, if the primary of a particular mod is health percentage, you will not be able to get that same stat in the secondary. So if you have an arrow over here that has got speed as the primary, you will not find speed in the secondary. They can't miss a, match, miss a match like that, okay? You cannot have a duplicate of the same stat. You can have percentile and flat. So for example, there's 3.63% offense secondary here. You could have a flat 300 additional offense. That can happen, but you can never have a percentage in the primary and in the secondary. There is a bit of a caveat to this, okay? Very old mods from when they were first introduced were able to double up on these mods. And there might be some, well, there are some historic mods that have got percentiles in both the primary and the secondary. You can't get them anymore. They've, they, they're gone, okay? So bear that in mind when you're looking at rolling your mods. You can't have speed in the primary and in the secondary, for example. It just doesn't happen. Okay, so when it comes to primary uh, mods and primary stats, dependent on the shape of the mod, it determines what will be the primary, okay? So, for example, the square is always an offense percentage, the diamond is always a defense percentage. Circles can either be health percentage or protection percentage. Crosses have a number of different percentile benefits that they can have. They can be tenacity, they can be defense, they can be protection, health, they can be potency, they can be offense, okay? So those are a number of different stats that it can roll here and it's all random with no way of changing it. Diamonds are very unique in that they can also get crit chance and they can also get crit damage. Crit damage only appears here and so does crit chance as a primary at least. Um, so that makes for very, very specific useful modding scenarios. You really want to try and find some crit damage triangles. And on the arrow, the arrow is the only place that you can get a speed primary. It can also do health, it can also do protection and defense. I believe it can also do... Uh, no, that might be it. Health, protection, defense. Oh, offense. Apologies, I totally forgot about offense and speed as well. Um, so generally speaking, there are good primaries and there are bad primaries. Health primary percentage, useful for certain mods. Offense primaries, absolutely useful for certain mods. Uh, speed primaries, useful for 90% of the game, okay? So you're always going to want to think about, oh, okay, I've got myself a protection primary. That could be useful for a character that uses a lot of protection or needs a lot of protection. Say, like, a number of very good tanks or JML, who is a tank, but he uses his protection for other means. Or you might find yourself in a Galactic Legend Ray's instance here, where she might want percentile health as a primary, but she might want percentile offense, or she might want speed. You can mod people a number of different ways. Always try to think about, will I have use for this particular percentage primary, okay? Things that you typically don't want to have is stuff like defense percentage, because you're better off with a defense set and having a protection primary or maybe even certain scenarios where you're just like, well, I'm not really going to use crit avoidance. That's another thing that can land on the arrow. Okay, crit avoidance is useful in very specific circumstances. A handful of characters might want crit avoidance there. So keep them around and see what you get on the secondary stats. So talking about the secondary stats, if I were to get a mod that I haven't rolled yet. Okay, so this one down here, this is an accuracy percentage primary. Oh, that's another one that we can get here. Absolute garbage tier. Almost, almost unused, okay? You'll see that only two of the stats on the secondaries have been shown. Those are completely randomized. 
If I was to go into Enhanced, we will see all of the secondary stats at level 12, okay? If this was a gray, which is the different rarities, okay? They'll go gray into green, into blue, into purple, into gold. That's the color here. Um, the number of secondary stats that are on show will differ based on level, okay? If you could have a level three gold mod and it would show you all of the secondaries immediately, immediately. But if it was a gray, you wouldn't see any secondaries until you hit three, six, 9, 12, or 15, depending, well, 12 is when you'd see all the stats, right? You'd get a new one at each of these tiers. Now you can see in the UI down here, it says reveal all stats. Because this is blue, at six, it will reveal all the secondaries. But I'm just gonna use this as a for example. If I go three, we'll get this stat here, revealed at level three. So we'll upgrade it. Hey, look, we got protection flat. Terrible, terrible stat to get. This is an awful mod. This is a waste of my money and yours. Uh, and we roll it to level six, boom, we'll get another stat. And this time we've got percentile health. You'll also notice that the primary stat is increasing with the levels that we put into it. So if I was to take this to level 15, what you'll notice is that we will actually get additional rolls on these secondary stats, okay? So at nine, because we've revealed all of the stats here on the secondary for this blue mod, when I take it to nine, it will roll randomly any one of these secondary stats. So here we go, boom. Protection. Great. Terrible stat. Probably the worst action. Well, we've got flat defense over here. That's probably worse. We roll it again. We'll get another stat. Boom. So secondary stats are increasing. And then we can take it to 15. When you take it to 15, you do not get an additional roll. What you will get is a maxed out primary. Okay. The primary stat will be considered to be maxed out at that point until we take it to 6E modding, which we'll take talk about in a moment. So let's do that. There we go. We've got accuracy modding. Perfect, perfect. 12% accuracy. This is an awful mod to be practicing on. So you'll see right now we've got this thing called slicing mods. And that's something that we need to talk on next. Okay. So to slice a mod is to increase the rarity. There are a number of rarities. We did just go over them. But you can see all these different colors. Those are the rarities. Okay. This is gray, lowest rarity. All right, then you've got green, which is the next tier up. Then it goes blue and then it goes purple and then it goes gold. Those are the tiers of modding. I'm not sure why my GK has got this mod on. Let's just max it out. Wonderful. Well done, GK. Okay, so when you have taken a mod to level 15, you will be able to slice it in order to increase the rarity of the mod. So for example, a gray will go into a green mod by using the enhancement. So we can slice, we can use these materials here, mark one bonding pins in this instance, and the number of um, materials that we need to, in order to enhance will increase as we increase the rarity, okay? Until it gets to tier A over here, in which point we will look to take it to 6E modding. How do we get these materials? Well, outside of a number of events, such as Smuggler's Run or Smuggler's Run 2, you can go over to Mod Battles from the Central Hollow Tables, and at Tier 9, you will see all of these different modding materials that we can get. These are all the things that we get to use in order to increase our mods. So, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and boop, farm myself up a couple of these Power Flow Control Chips, which is a great name, to be honest. Power Flow Control Chip, it makes you sound like you're really, really getting into the weeds of things, doesn't it? Let's have some tea. Lovely. Okay, let's get back to our mods. So, once you've that's not what I clicked. Once you've been farming up those mod materials, you're able to expend them to increase the stats on the secondaries, roll additional stats on it, okay? Now, there is a cap on how many times a particular stat can roll. You'll see that this one here is a gold mod or a tier A mod, and you'll see that there are numbers next to all of these secondary stats, or most of them anyway, that indicate how many times that particular stat has rolled. Any stat in the secondary can roll five times, all right? Once will be the basic when it, you know, when you take it to level 12 at, at, at most. Um, and then once you get it to tier A, the most it can get is up to five. All right, you'll see that in total, if we added up all of the numbers here, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rolls there, okay? Eight rolls there in total. Once you have taken it to tier A, you can get it further as something known as 6E modding. You'll see here, it goes up to tier E, all right? Tier E, tier E to tier A. We can do that whole process again, essentially. 
but this time we need to, uh, it can only be equipped by gear 12 or higher characters okay so it limits the use in your roster you need to have higher geared characters in order to use them but the benefit of this is taking it from tier a on a five dot mod up to a six dot mod up at the top here and making it all gold like that you will have a massive boost to the secondary stats you'll have a boost to the primary stat which varies depending on what type of stat it is so for example this percentile offense will go from 5.88 percent up to like eight percent 8.88 percent chance i want to say for the offense 8.5 percent chance for the offense you can see that's quite a significant increase health for example goes from like 5.3 up to uh, 16 percent really really big increases okay but the other benefit is you get to go through that whole process again you know where we saw it went from a gray mod to a gold mod well at six dots with the six dot modding you can do that whole thing again and you can get an additional four rolls of stats okay and once again they can go on any stat that's a secondary that does not have five rolls on it okay so in an ideal world, you'll have a secondary stat, perfect secondary stat like speed that you've rolled five times and you've got 28 speed on it. And then you've also got, say, offense percentage that you've got five rolls on it and it's got like 8% additional offense. Now that's like a real god tier mod, but that is like the maximum you can take any given mod to. All right. Now, unfortunately, like I said, it's completely random where it goes and each secondary stat has a range of stats that it can roll it's not like you roll it you hit speed you get five speed speed for example can roll three or it can roll six which across five rolls is a bit of a difference it's a bit of a difference you can have a total of what like 15 speed difference between good rolls and bad rolls across five rolls and that makes a significant impact to how much total speed that uh, particular mod would have and that's true of every any single stat i'm not going to go through each of the ranges but just bear that in mind that you've got good percentiles and bad percentile ranges for any any given stat that you happen to roll you'll be able to see this sort of thing when you look at um when you look at the the efficiency of the rolling essentially so if we were to look at calibration for example we're going to enhance here and we'll look at calibrating okay this is locked because you can only do it on 60 modding let's try that again apologies we'll go to calibration here now can you see at the bottom we've got average slice quality the higher this number is and the full of this these bars are the better off that mod is in its base form you can see this roll here was an almost perfect roll of percentiles uh, offense but this one over here this fourth roll that we or three third roll that we got wasn't particularly good it was below the 50 percent mark so it wasn't the best offense roll overall that's a pretty decent average slice quality you can see over here we've got a 79 percent slice quality so there's no there's a lot of variation a lot of randomization and a lot of rng in mods and mod rolling the only way we can overcome it is by using a lottery method which is you just have to do a lot of mods so while we're here we'll talk about mod calibration and how it benefits people okay so mod calibration is as we've talked about before when you roll stats, they're completely random. You can only have a certain number of rolls in any given stat. However, once you've taken it to six dot mods, the higher up you take, the more attempts you will have at calibrating a stat. So we can select one of these stats, anything above a one, and we could choose to re-roll it. So reintroduce the RNG. You're saying, you know what? I really didn't want potency on this particular secondary. I'd love to remove that potency and have it go on speed instead or percentile offense in order to do that you need to have these micro attenuators which you can get from uh, farming mods in general on certain nodes or from smugglers run 2 events or various events in the game and various stores in the game okay the cost of calibrating a mod will increase each time you do it the problem with calibrating a mod is that there's no guarantee again where it's going to go it's all random you could roll the exact same stat that you just had at a lower value you don't have to keep it you can choose to discard it or you can choose to keep it so we'll use this mod as a for instance this is not an ideal way of calibrating our mods but we'll use this as a for instance 6.9 percent potency on boba fett sino django we'll calibrate this mod we're hoping to get speed so it will re-roll that stat hey we got speed that's fantastic 
That was, uh, that, that was pretty good. So we got a plus four speed. So it'll ask you here, do you want to discard it or do you want to keep these changes? Now this, for me, is a great change. We gained an additional sport four speed on this mod. There's no reason for me to not keep that. So I'll keep those changes, lock that in. Booyah, we now have better speed mods. Lovely. Speed modding is probably the most important. What you'll notice now is that the calibration number has gone down. So the maximum we can calibrate is six times. We've only got five chances left to recalibrate, but the cost of it has gone up from 15 to 25. I believe at the very top end, it goes to about 100 or 140 calibration materials on that last roll. And again, there's no guarantees that it's going to go to something that you want. So yes, it's very, very useful, but let's try to identify the mods that have got the best chance of giving us a really good mod. So for example, if this offense percentage over here had five rolls of offense on it already, then that means, as we know, that it can't roll any further. So if we were to re-roll a stat, it means the number of available options for that mod to re-roll is lower. Instead of having four stats that it could go into, it could only have three stats. So it's more likely to roll something that you need. And those are the best places to focus on trying to recalibrate your mods. To put that into a practical example then, let's go ahead and sort our mods by speed. We'll go into the filter section over here. We'll go secondary stats of speed. And I want to say, or oh, speed and offense percentage. Oh, that's primaries. We'll go speed and offense percentage. And you've got a number of, um, you've got a number of, of modifiers that you can apply to this. So we're looking for a speed mod that's got at least, no, equal to four rolls on speed um, with good speed, an average slice quality of at least 60%, so it'll be a decent speed mod. And the offense percentage, for example, has got five. So it's maxed out the offense. We know that we've got one secondary stat that cannot roll, and we'd filter that mod. And you'll see I've got three mods in my roster right now that fit that requirement. So if I was looking to recalibrate a particular mod, maybe I would look to try and get something like this. I've got a maxed out offense mod with really low rolls. That's awful. You can see the average slice quality here on that offense percentage is 26%. That sucks. And we've got four rolls of speed on the secondary with an, a health primary. That's quite nice, to be honest. So if I wanted to try and get this to be a fifth roll of speed, this would be a really good option because I could re-roll this tenacity and I could potentially hit 25 speed, 26 speed at a best. And there's, you know, there's technically a 33% chance that I'd get that to land. That's quite useful. So there's a short tool that I want to introduce you guys to that takes a look through your mods and identifies the best targets for this. The link for this will be in the description down below, and I highly advise you guys use this. So I, I apologize for the white light, but this is the Unleashed Mod Calibration, okay? Uh, once again, link for this is inside the description. Make sure you use this. All you do is enter in your ally code and you click this refresh mod data. We've got a bunch of options down here on how to focus on it, right? And it'll look for your best mods to, to recalibrate, okay? So you can do the priority of how, how, how much weighting you put towards a good speed mod. So you could have that really high. We're like, yeah, I want to find the best mods for speeds. Typically, you don't want to show like 100 mods. I would keep it to just 10. Weighted by cost means the cost of calibrating that mod. Um, you could go for speed hit percentage in this instance. Oh, sorry. And you can you can select individual shapes if you really wanted to. You could select individual um, sets if you want to do and individual primaries. Then you just go refresh mod data. And what it will do is it will go ahead and it'll be like, OK, I found your ally code. I'm going to look at all of your mods and I'm just going to give you bam. In this instance, I'm going to give you the top 10 mods for you to slice right now. These are the ones that are give you the best chance of hitting a speed percentage, uh, a speed secondary, essentially. It is such a valuable tool and it will save you all so much time. So the Unleashed mod calibration has finished. It took like a minute, which is really, really useful. And it's given me 10 mods for me to look at here. So it says, OK, so this 6A square that's got a health offense set, obviously, because that's the that's the primary on, on squares. What character is on? Currently, it's a quick to Darth Bane. The current speed is 22 and it's had four rolls. So it has a percent, it, you know, it could potentially have an additional three to six additional speed there. So if it rolls that additional one, it would have 25 
5 to 28 potential speed. The cost for the uh, recalibration right now is at 25 calibration mats, and we've got a 33% chance of hitting it because we must have one of the secondary stats maxed out. So if I was to check that out, let's go to Darth Bane and look at his health, tr his health square. So here's that health square, and as you can see, four rolls, speed, 22. We've got a health percentage secondary over here. So if I was really looking to calibrate, this is a great one to recalibrate. I just look to get rid of that percentile defense and hopefully land an additional six speed, getting the 22 speed secondary, and that would be amazing. This tool, guys, is fantastic for you to use to try and calibrate your mods. Every single time when Smuggler's Run 2 comes around, which is the best way of getting calibration materials, which is, you need Jabba the Hutt in order to use it, by the way, it comes around about once a month. I always run this, this mod and I say, find me the best mods for me to slice. And it will give me these and I'll just try and slice them. Hopefully I will get a winner. Usually after you've got about hundred calibration mats, you can at least improve your mods just that little bit more. So right now I'm going to give you all a couple of very high level bits of information around which mods you should be trying to slice. All right. The basic premise of Galaxy of Heroes is that fast characters win matches. Okay. Getting ahead of your opponent, attacking first, usually means the difference between winning or losing, provided you know the strategy. That's the thing that's going to separate you. So the most important mods for you to have are fast speed secondary mods. Like 22 speed here is okay. If I was to just filter by speed secondaries right now, let's actually clear off all of our filters right now. Reset to default, filter mods. And we just go ahead and we sort by speed and we just put it to speed secondaries. Okay, so Speed mods are the most important ones. So if we look at over here and we've got a 28 speed secondary, that's phenomenal. The highest you can actually get on a speed secondary is 31. I've never seen anybody have it. Essentially, you could have a speed mod that starts with six in the secondary and rolls six each time. It's basically impossible to get. But I have seen a couple of people with a 30 speed secondary mod. 29 speed secondary mods are more common, but still highly unlikely. 28 is still very high. 27 is high, 26 is high, 25 is high. Anything over 25 is a very, very good mod. And you want to try and maximize the number of mods that you have that have got that speed secondary. If you like, if you had a hundred mods with 25 speed plus secondaries, it still wouldn't be enough. That's always the rule, guys. You always want to have fast speed secondaries, okay? But speed is not the only thing that matters. You do want to have a variety of sets. So speed sets will offer you additional speed overall as a percentile to that. It gives you 10% speed if you've got four speed mods. Okay, that's very, very important to have. So you need to have speed sets, for example, with speed secondaries. You also want health sets and defense sets, and you want to have uh, tenacity sets and all this sort of stuff with a number of stats. Speed is the most important. But a couple of the other really important secondary stats for you to look out for are percentile stats for all of your relic characters because as a character's base stats climb higher, percentile secondaries become all the more important. And in particular, stuff like offense percentage, health percentage, protection percentage, tenacity percentage, potency percentage. All of these are really important substats. Defense percentage is also in the current meta very, very good. It increases the amount we can, or well, decreases the amount of incoming damage that we take. And for tanks, it's actually a fantastic stat, especially with all the base offense that we're getting that's going up. Like I said, these are highly, highly impacted by the base stats of your characters. So when characters get to higher relic levels, all these percentile stats become even more valuable. All right. In an ideal world, we would find speeds. Uh, we would find mods that have got speed secondaries with offense percentage and health percentage and protection percentage that specifically tailor to the character. Typically, tanks you want lots of defense, health, and protection. Maybe a bit of tenacity. Offensive characters like Raid Han, for example, you might want crit damage, a crit damage set with offense percentages and speed. Things like that. Um, certain characters might rely on a lot of potency, like Dr. Aphra needs to have lots of potency in order to ramp up her mastery. Characters that really need to land specific debuffs need lots of potency percentages. Characters that need to resist them, like tanks, might need a lot of tenacity. Characters like tanks might need a bunch of defense percentage. So there's no one size fits all. 
but if you focus majority around building up as much speed secondaries as you can, you will knock out 90% of the problem with modding with just focusing on one stat. Okay. Now I'm going to give another big shout out here to another highly, highly used platform to help with modding in general and general user quality of life. This is Hot Utils. Hot Utils um, ran by Hot Source is a fantastic community uh, tool that will help you with your modding. Within Hot Utils, some of the benefits that you can do is stuff like completely remod your roster without you touching anything. So they have a playground over here where you can actually just go in, it refreshes, it takes a look at every single character within your roster. You can change the order of these characters to improve the priority listing of them all. And you can say how to mod each individual character. Okay, you can put weightings for specific st uh, secondary stats to say, oh, I want loads of speed and a bit of protection. You can say you must have protection primaries. You can say that you must have certain sets within this this particular character and it will try to its utmost to just look at all of your mods and apply the best mods it can. Now, it won't literally go in and equip them unless you pay for their patron, which I do think is probably the most benefit beneficial patron that you can do, you know, apart from becoming a patron of the tribe um, in the entire game. You can automate this mods and it can remod your entire roster at a click of a button. You're able to make your own loadouts for different things. So you can see I've got stuff for Droid Galactic Challenges and Kashyyyk Testing, and I've got various raid mod setups that I use when I'm doing the speeder bike raid. I just click load and it loads those mods right in. So let's take a look at this. This will create an image of the mod setups within a particular mod loadout that I have. This is a raid side swipe setup. So for the speeder bike raid, in order to use these three characters, I remod them for their stats. If I ever want to apply this, I just go into Hot Utils, I hit load, click load, it applies the loadout, takes a couple of seconds. The bigger the mod loadout, the longer it's going to take. And yes, this still logs into your account and it spends your credits in order to do this. It'll see the cost down there is 254,250. It'll apply them and you don't have to do anything. Next time you log into into the game, it's going to all be applied. Now, the benefit of this, of course, is it saves a heck of a lot of time for you because then you can go back and you can reverse your mods and put it back to your default once you've saved the loadout for that. Whenever you go into an event and you're like, oh, I just need to move this mod here or I need to move that mod here. Once you're done with it, you don't have to worry about, oh, whose character had that particular mod? Did I want to have that there or did I want to have that there? You can just go ahead, go back into Hot Utils and hit load, um, uh, load the loadout that you're looking to do. So boom, there you go. You can see it's now active. Raid swipe swipe two, that's now active. I'll go in, I'll do my raid run, I'll get my score, and then I can go over here and I can do, do my GAC 1.5 loadout and just load this in and be like, okay, I'm done. It's as easy as that. It's a fantastic, fantastic modding tool. Now, not only can it do all this, remod your entire roster, load in different loadouts at a click of a button that really doesn't take too long but you can also mass manage all of your mods within hot utils if you happen to be a premium member what does that mean exactly well let me show you we head over to the management tab and within the management tab it has all of your mods It'll even have a section for incomplete mods. These might be mods that you've recently acquired that you haven't leveled up. So say, look, these are all your level one mods and you can just select all of them, select all of them, okay, select all. You can then go down here and you can say, oh, I just want to take them up one tier. So it'll take them to level three, for example, or you can click upgrading complete to expose all. So you'll see all of the secondary stats and not only that, but you can sell them from here. You can mass sell them. You can mass upgrade them as well. It's basically everything that you can do within the game for modding. It does that better. You can just instantly look at all of your mods. You can apply a bunch of really sophisticated filters in order to figure out exactly the type of mods that are really, really good for you to keep on slicing. It's just, it's, I can't emphasize this enough, guys. If you really want to get into the nitty gritty of how to improve your mods, Hot Utils enables you to do that at a much quicker pace than if you didn't have it. Massively beneficial. Big shout out to Hot Source. So you should really, you should really think about that quality of your, of the mod when you look at slicing it to the next level. Personally, whenever I'm looking at increasing my speed secondaries, I always try to look at various thresholds dependent on the tier of the mod. So if it's a gray mod, 
I only really look at mods that have got 4 speed or 5 speed secondaries. Those are the ones that I'll take to green. When they're green, I'll look at a mod that has got, still, if it's got speed secondary, if it's got 4 or 5 and hasn't rolled it yet, I'll keep that. If it's sliced into speed and it's got 9 speed, 10 speed, I'll keep that and try to slice it again. If it's blue, if it's got 10 speed and it's only missing one roll, so it might have rolled something that wasn't speed, I'd probably still keep it, take it to the next level. At purple, if it's 15 speed or even 14 speed to a certain extent, I will roll it again to keep seeing. Ultimately, I'm trying to maximize the chances of me hitting a 20 plus speed secondary mod. If it can go over 25, all the better. That makes a real tangible difference in how I'm going to, um, uh, you know, uh, equip and mod my characters in the future. The main takeaway is that you are never going to have all the mods that you want, and there are always better mods for you to get. You just have to keep on refreshing your mod energy, all right? It's probably the most important thing for you to do. Every single day when you log in, if you have the crystals, spend 150 crystals a day refreshing your mod energy, farming new slicing materials for your mods, farming new mods. Slice them, buy them out of the store, and just keep on doing that until you do not have any additional mod slicing materials or you run out of credits it's as simple as that guys it's i can't stress enough how important it is to keep on slicing new mods i don't ever want people to get to the point that they're ready for a legendary event and they just can't beat it because the modding is not right i don't want you to be in gac and have no chance of winning because the opponent's mods are just so much better than yours so again triple refresh your mod energy head into shipments go over to the mod store identify the mods in here that are good for example this mod over here it's got five speed and the great thing about this is cg highlights any mod within this store that's got speed if this had it's a purple mod i buy purple and gold mods from the store those only and only if they have four or five speed so i'd buy this mod because it's got five speed i'll take that absolutely every single refresh i'll look in here anything else nothing else right now has got speed secondaries so i'm just going to ignore everything else if anything there was either gold or purple had four or five speed i'd probably buy it and then i would just go into my inventory and i'd roll it up so let's do that one that was a purple speed square and it had uh, five speed on it so let's go over to a character let's find that mod and let's see how i would look about leveling that up here's that mod we'll go to enhance i'll just take it to level three let's see what happens boom we get a defense flat take it up a level Okay, it did not roll to it did not roll speed once. Not good. It rolled defense. Uh, two rolls is usually maximum that I would really allow. So normally, normally I wouldn't roll this any further. I'd be like, uh, I'd kind of think this as, as a wasted uh, effort, so I won't take it any further. But on the off chance, I'll just see. We get defense, flat defense again, and then what? We we oh well, we maxed out. So this is a mod that I would sell. I'd just sell it. It's a speed set. Speed sets are great, but it only rolled the base of speed we we could slice it and it might roll speed but even if it rolled like a six speed i'd be hesitant to take it any further so i'm just going to sell this mod if it rolled like 14 or 15 speed i would consider taking this to a gold and then seeing if we could go into 60 modding and take it further but i think that's going to about do it for today's videos i've gone on long enough i think i think this video is too long to really be any more useful to you but if you want to have a little bit more information about modding let me know in the comment section below and i'll see if i can get out a sequel a follow-up video to this to help you guys further all right guys make sure you like and consider subscribing to your boy scribe and i will see you all in the very next video Peace out, and may the force be with you.